So it's a bit weird at the beginning of this chapter because all we're doing is just learning how to differentiate things um, and just doing a little bit of applications with them. Again, we will do some proofs of these things later on as well. Um, but hopefully, when we're looking at differentiating exponential and log functions, hopefully you know already that the definition of the exponential function is that it is the function that differentiates to itself. Okay, it's the weird kind of function that it differentiates to itself, which means it also integrates to itself as well, because differentiation and integration are those reverse processes. Now, uh, mine had a little printing error down here before, so you already know that e to the power of kx just differentiates to k e to the power of kx. And again, this is not a specific rule, but it's a, an application of the chain rule that we'll come across later on. And I think this actually pops up in year one as well. This actually does come up in some of the questions. You need to know this differentiates to k e to the kx. Sorry, this differentiates to this like this. Now, these ones on the right-hand side look a little bit uh, messier that we've got here. So I've said, if you have, instead of e to the power of x, if you had any number to the power of x, you still get the same result. You get a to the power of x, a bit like here e to the x differentiates to itself, a to the x differentiates to itself. But the difference here is that when you differentiate an exponential function, we also, multi also multiply by ln of the base. We also multiply by ln a here. And we are going to prove this after we cover something called implicit differentiation in quite a way off. Okay? For now, you just need to take my word for it. If you have something to the power of x, it will also differentiate to something to the power of x, but also with the ln a there. The same rule will apply as that we had here when you had the kx. You would also have the same as above, but you'd also multiply by k as well. So for example, if I had that y was equal to 2 to the power of x, I would get dy by dx is equal to ln2, either dot for multiplying or multiplied by 2 to the power of x. OK? Um, if I had another one as an example, let's say I had y was equal to 3 to the power of 4x. Well, using this rule, I would say that I still am going to have the 3 to the power of 4x, but I'm also going to have 4 ln 3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 4x. And if I had e to the x. Well, we know what e to the x differentiates to, but e to the x is actually a special case of this one that I've got here. It would be, it would be ln e times by e to the x, but ln e is equal to 1. So you just get that dy by dx is equal to e to the x. So I'm going to make up another one as well. If I said that y was equal to uh, 15 over 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 5x. I don't like 5x. I'm going to change it to 4x. 3 to the power of 4x. But I've just done that one. Let's do 3 to the power of 6x instead. When I differentiate it, the 15 over 2 would stay from before. I would also have an ln 3. I'd also have a 6, six ln3 three or ln3 three times 6 is the same thing. And then I would have the th 3 to the power of 6x. So 15 over 2 times 6 is 45. So I have 45 ln3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 6x. And this is like one of the only times we tend to keep multiplication symbols in because they're actually making a cl it clear that there's a multiplication. If I wrote 4 ln3, 3 to the power of 4x, it's not clear that that's actually been multiplied together. So it's one of the rare times we actually use a multiplication symbol. Okay? So now we know how to differentiate e to the power of x and also anything to the power of x. We're going to have a look at differentiating ln functions. Now, ln functions differentiate to 1 over x. So ln x differentiates to 1 over x. And again, all of this is going to be proven to you later. But for now, I want to give you as many facts and knowledge to try and do as much differentiation as we can. What do we think that ln of kx is going to differentiate to? You think it's going to be? OK, so 
when we had e to the kx, it differentiated to ke to the kx. So I think this would be k over kx, which is 1 over x. So that's really weird. ln of x differentiates to 1 over x, but ln of kx differentiates to 1 over x. And I'm going to show you why that's true, OK? So the patterns from before made us think that that was going to be the case. But we're actually going to see why. And this is to do with your log laws. So if we had that y equals ln of kx, that is the ln of k multiplied by x. What do log laws tell me I can do to pull these two things apart? Good. It would be ln of k plus ln of x. Now, what is ln k? Is it a variable? Is it a constant? Are you sure it's a constant? Yeah, k is just a number. You could type into your calculator ln of a number, and it would just give you a number. So this is a constant. It's a constant that you have. Now, if you're not sure about how I broke this down into these things here, you're going to need to be doing some exponential practice from year one, because it's going to be coming up lots and lots and lots here. Now, when you differentiate a constant, what happens when you differentiate a constant? It disappears. So dy by dx is just this thing being differentiated, because this thing differentiates to 0. And ln x differentiates to 1 over x. So this shows if you differentiate ln of kx, you do just get 1 over x down here. So this is a bit boring, because <laughs> these things I'm going to now say is, OK, well, if y is equal to the ln of 3x, then dy by dx is obviously just going to be 1 over x. If it is kx. Soon it's going to be like x squared plus 5 or sine x. But at the moment, when it's just simple stuff like kx, it's going to be 1 over x. And I guess you could still think about it as the other rule. If I had y was equal to ln of 5x, well, that means we think it's going to be uh, over 5x because that's what ln goes to. And then you'd also multiply it by the k, which is 5, and you do get 1 over x. It's always just going to be 1 over x for the ln ones that you have there. OK? So it's a bit weird. But again, all the proofs of these things are going to come up when we, uh, when we have a go at these. So on the bottom half of your page, you have got all of these questions. Now, what I've done is I've put a reminder of all of the different rules that we've got here. And I've got some things that I want you to differentiate. And I'm going to give you some time to have a go at differentiating these things. And then we'll come back and see how you've done on them. Okay.